Hi guys, Alex here and welcome to a detailed CPU upgrade guide for this uh, Mac Pro 2013 through 2019 version. Let me talk a little bit more about the version of this Mac Pro. Now these uh, Mac Pros are A1481, that's their model number, and EMC2630. You can go to everymac.com and look up uh, more information about this, but just to sum it up, basically these were released uh, in four different versions. Uh, you had uh, the um, quad core, six core, eight core, and 12 core. One of the things that I've learned when doing research uh, on upgrading these CPUs is that by upgrading to the 12 core CPU, while your single thread performance of applications is slightly going to go down, uh, probably around 10% or so. Uh, the uh, multi-core performance, meaning that either applications that utilize multi-core or running multiple applications at the same time, that performance is almost going to double. So there is a very good reason to perform this upgrade. Now let's take a look here. I have a CPU right here that I purchased from a supplier and you can have the link down in the description to know exactly where to get it. Let me uh, come back to the screen here and show you. This is the uh, 12 core. Uh, this is the, uh, the unit right here. Uh, this is the 12 core uh, 2.7 Xeon E5 uh, 2697V2. That's the CPU that we're gonna be putting in. And that's the CPU you can find in the description. I'm gonna take this over <clears throat> and put it over to the side right here. And now I'm gonna go over some of the tools that we're going to need for this installation. First, we're going to need that thermal paste for this CPU. We're gonna need three driver bits, a T5, a T8, and a T10. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, so first we wanna pull the power cord and get rid of that so we can go ahead and push over this release lever and pull this up. That's going to expose our unit. Now I want to be frank with you and forewarn you that this is a extremely sophisticated upgrade. This is going to involve taking this entire unit apart down to the center of its core. So we're going to begin with the T10 screws. And you can see, first we're gonna uh, go with the top. This top has one, two, three, four, five. All right, so these five right here are going to allow us to move on to the next phase, which is to lift this up, but be very careful because this is still attached, okay? So by the ports here, you have the Bluetooth uh, and antenna cables. So you wanna flip over to the opposite side, like this, where the two graphics cards are. I'm gonna pull this up kind of like tilt it over like this, okay? Now this is going to allow us, this will expose these two right here screws and uh, let me get a better angle in this. What we need is we need this uh, T8 screwdriver. And this T8 screwdriver is going to allow us to remove these two T8 screws. Okay, now that allows 
allows us to lift this little part up and out. I'm just going to put that there. All right, now we get our plastic prime tool. Now you can see that if I'm able to do this in front of camera, um, you know, you should be able to manage this pretty good. You just pry underneath. Uh, not too hard, be very careful, especially, you know, uh, with cables that are fragile like this. And just remember, this is not it. There's still another secondary little cable right here. This is that Bluetooth. So you want to pop that off, boom, just like that. All right, so that's it. Uh, this right here is the fan. Probably want to clean that up. I'm going to put that off over to the side here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take this and just flip it over, just like that. And now we're going to do the same exact thing with the five T10 screws, except on the opposite side. So let's start off right here. So we want to kind of take that just push it right up and boom voila uh, now we're going to move on to the uh, graphics cards first okay so we have these two graphics cards i want to come in with a little prying tool here uh, and just remember this you don't you kind of don't want to pry up against um like here i know it's seems like a comfortable thing to do but you don't want to pry up against any like capacitors, right? Uh, or any kind of hardware that's on the board. Uh, you want to find a place where you can just kind of pry without having to lean on anything that's fragile. You know, perhaps maybe even with your fingers a little bit. Um, if you are unable to do this, um, of course, just just going slow and taking your time and then just a little bit at a time uh, is the uh, the best way to go instead of uh, fast. I don't want to go too fast. Okay? So this kind of loosened up pretty easy. You can see I didn't bend any teeth or anything like that. And that's really the goal. You don't, you don't want to have a little accident. All right, so that unplugs the first. Uh, graphics card and then now we're gonna unplug the uh, graphics card that has the uh, solid state um, disk on it, mounted on it which to be honest with you I'm not sure if it's a very smart design to uh, put a uh, graphics card here I'm not sure if it's very smart to put capacitors right next to where someone is going to be unplugging the graphics card. So perhaps it's intentional. <laughs> so next thing we want to do is we want to take these T8 screws, these two T8 screws right here. Let me give you a better look here from the top. Uh, okay. So we just unplug these card, these right here, and we have these two T8 screws. So let's go ahead and Remove those. One. And two. Okay. This is going to allow us to kind of lift this up. Lift it up and kind of uh, let me come back to this angle. So we kind of want to just go left to right and just kind of pry it up and out of its socket because there's a socket right here. Come back here. You see this uh, this um, socket that we you know it was plugged into, and uh, that basically exposes this connection. And uh, you can see like this one here, um, very tight. 
Okay, I see. Okay, I feel, I feel it. So, I guess once, <clears throat> so once you kind of get it going, you know, it starts coming apart. And um, once again, the key here is nice and slow. I'm going to take this now and just, and you can see that this is like kind of loose here. I'm going to flip this over. Okay. Flip this over nice and carefully. And just kind of lift this up. And uh, what we really want is we want access to this guy right here. Okay, and let me just get a little better angle from the top camera so you can really uh, get your eye on this. So you can see here, yes, that's what we want right there. That's the, uh, that's the T5. Of course, on the other side, same exact thing. Again, be very careful with this. Now that we undid those two screws, what we want to do is we want to lift this up. This, um, this is the guard for our power. And um, that's what we just basically undid on both sides. We're going to be uh, unscrewing this, 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 and this. All right. So, and then that basically releases that this power supply here. Okay. So, as you can see here. Um, you know, this is what it looks like when it's out. Now, of course, when you're laying these down or separating them, please be mindful of these connectors, okay? They have lots of teeth on them. You don't want to lay it down on the connector and bend the teeth. So be very, very careful when you're uh, handling this. Let's come back to this angle here. We have two more screws that we want to get rid of right here. This uh, T8 here and another T8 here. So let's come back to this angle right here. So here we're looking at this and what we want to do is we want to get these uh, four outside T10 screws. So let's go ahead and do that. We want to grab the, uh, the outside ones. As to that comes off but as you can see this is the memory modules this is basically the main logic board and voila our CPU is here we're going to, for uh, this right here these four so that's going to release basically release our CPU and once again this is a t10 screw This goes into that following orientation, as you can see, comes off, and then goes in there. All right, so let's pay attention to this. Let's see here. I'm going to take this and swap it out for our new. Um, let's see. This is, this is our new one right here. No comparison. You can see that the new one is slightly different uh, shape. So one thing I want to note, in case you're afraid, um, this can only go in one way. So don't be afraid. I mean, this there's, uh, it, and I'll just show it to you so you can see it. Say if you wanted to uh, 
put it in the wrong way. You see how these teeth, they don't really line up. So, basically, only goes in like so. Okay, drops in. Doesn't really matter which way. <clears throat> Just so that it's lined up. Uh, but there is going to be... Okay, so this is, this is the most important part of the entire uh, situation here. We want to flip this over. We don't want the processor moving or shifting around. Like once it's made this contact, you know, we don't want it bouncing, bouncing around and like bending of the teeth and stuff. S uh, slide it onto the table flat so it never moved. Okay, and it's exactly where it needs to be, um, and it's not moving. Of course, we're reassembling. This is, we're almost done. Okay, we're going to put it down like this. And remember, to tighten up where the processor sits, we need to do these one, two, three, four first. Okay, uh, we're done with this one. We're gonna come back to come back to our heatsink here. We're going to wipe this off. We have our thermal paste. I'm not going to explain why different people have different theories. I'm just going to tell you how I do it. And of course, if you have applied thermal paste before, then uh, you do your method. But if you haven't, then learn what I do. So basically, I like to put on a little layer right here like this. Okay. Do like a little X here. Uh, and I just wrap my finger around. You want to just kind of smother it around. When I spread it out evenly like this, this is going to make sure that once, once that makes contact with that piece of metal, uh, it's going to be flush and it's going to distribute the heat generated by this processor evenly. And I know I'm going to get a lot of flack in the comments because people, you know, are taught how to do this in a certain way and, and you know, I'm just going to give you the thermal dynamics on it. Thermal paste does not cool anything, okay? Thermal paste's job is to make sure to bridge the gap between two sources of heat. So the heat transferred from the um, uh, processor goes off onto the onto the heat sink and then the fan spins around and cools the heat sink off so the heat kind of dissipates that's the whole point of a cooling system this right here uh, spreading it out around it allows it pure contact with the uh, heat sink and so they essentially when you spread it out because they become one uh, doing you know not only a good job, the best possible job it can do. So, uh, and anybody that says anything otherwise, you know, they just heard something somewhere and they don't really know why they're doing what they're doing. All right, so now we put these back together. Okay, so adjust the angle of this. You see here, I'm just trying to uh, line up these holes. Okay, that is it for the processor. One and two. Uh, four screws right here. I'm gonna line them up on the top. This is what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that we're not accidentally bending any connectors.
now we put the um, we put this little retainer back over okay and we want to make sure once we put it back that it lines up with the two T5 remember the T5 Yep. All right. Put it back over like this. And remember, we're putting this back on. Get a better angle here. Okay, we're gonna these these two alignment pins make this relatively easy. Uh, we put that up, and then we just click that in. Flip this back over so that this goes onto this slot. Let me see if I get a better angle here. All right, we're gonna go like that. Yes. Let's see if you guys can see that. And that. And now, we kind of go left to right. This has to go in all the way. All right, and sometimes you might put it, push it in, and you feel resistance, and you feel like no, it's not in, it, it, you know, or yes, it is in all the way. Well, we want to make sure, uh, and we go very carefully, left to right. Okay, want to hear that click, like you heard that nice solid click. Then what you want to do is you want to uh, look at it from from the side, and you want to make sure that it's nice and straight. You see how that's pretty straight, that it's not sitting crooked. It's not to the left, it's not to the right, uh, it's pretty straight. Okay, so that's that's when you know that uh, that's on, okay? So coming back, all right, now <laughs> you might also get confused when you look and you see that uh, T-screw pattern there and think, well, we already have a screw there. No, there's another hole inside of there into which these screws originally went. Okay, next we want to reconnect these graphics cards as you see both of these. So once again, line things up with these uh, these two holes, the two uh, uh, little uh, um, I guess guides, guide posts. All right, uh, and once you have a relatively good alignment, you want to put some pressure on it and click those graphics cards in and uh, you want to make sure it's nice tight and aligned and then you didn't feel much resistance but you felt like the connection was solid when it went in uh, it's very important because as you can see there's so many different um, connectors here that they're all straight and aligned it's one of the most important things here we don't, we don't want to screw this up so left right left right ah, nice and tight Okay, that basically finishes this part. We can go ahead and uh, take the bottom. Remember, this is the bottom. How you can tell like how this cab back goes back, if you spin it around, okay, if you spin it around, you see that right here, there's this groove and it looks like a little mesh here. It looks like maybe like a speaker uh, mesh. Like that's what it looks like. That goes onto this groove right here. Tell, see, it lines up perfectly. All right, and so that we're T8, and we're reinstalling the first five screws. Okay, so that's the bottom here. Now, flipping this back over. Remember our little connection right here. And make sure not to forget this Bluetooth. So, let's get this angle on. We have our little cap. I'll blind this and click it in first. So, 
going to go like this. And you heard that little click, click. Uh, and uh, this should spin freely without letting go. So you want to, that's how you know it's on. The second one, the second part, is this. And what we want to do is align it. Yep. Good. Yes. Good pressure on it. I could, I, and I, you know, you can really feel when it clicks in correctly. If you feel pressure and it's not, you know, it doesn't seem like it's right, then it's probably not right. You want to make sure to seat it correctly. Nice and slow. Try it a couple of times. All right. And then uh, we're going to put this clip back on. This is very important. Keeps this connection properly. So, there. <clears throat> there it is. This is almost done. All right, now that we have this, uh, we basically align it back down. And there. That's it. Now let's put these five screws back on. Alright, so the last thing to do, put the cap on, and we're done. Lock it, put this in, just to show you we're not messing around, let's put it up onto three. Go in here, go to about this Mac, and boom, 2.7, 12 core, E5. There you have it, a uh, 12 core uh, CPU. You can find the link for the CPU and all the parts used in this video in the description below. Please give a thumbs up if we helped you out. I really appreciate it, it helps the channel grow and it gives me feedback. Please drop me a comment and let me know what you thought about this installation video. Perhaps I can improve somewhere, or perhaps you thought that this was the best tutorial that you have found on this specific Mac. Give me a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.